quick lessons from books. How to Have Impossible Conversations, a very practical guide by Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay. Today's lesson, nobody likes to be lectured, but aren't you lecturing us right now? Just forget about it. I'm not even really talking about lectures where you're talking to a class. We're talking more about lecturing someone. Your boss telling you what to do, your mom telling you what to do, your spouse telling you what to do, everybody's always telling me what to do, and you don't like it. No one wants to tell you what to believe or what to think. You want to come up with your own ideas, and that's the point. The research literature on effective conversation shows that delivering messages does not work. That's a one-way transaction. It's a one-way uh, street. No one wants to be told what to believe. We want to come up with our own ideas. That's the point today. So the background is World War II. During war, many of the resources from the nation go to the war effort. How, you know, we have to split up the, the resources, mainly food, between the soldiers and the public. And that creates shortages, less supply for the public. Mainly what we're talking about is meat. So during World War II, the background for this lesson there is a meat shortage because much of our meat has to go over to fund or go to the troops to help support the war effort. And at home, we don't have enough meat for the people. So the government's trying to find out, like, how do we find enough meat to feed the public? We're good with the soldiers, but what about the people? We can't have our country starving. So they say, hey, we're running low on meat because of the war effort. We're going to need you to cook sweet bread. We got a ton of this sweet bread. This is the part of the lesson where you're saying, what do you mean by sweet bread? Thought we were talking about meat. Not that, not that either. Sweetbread is a culinary name for the thymus, also called the throat, gullet, and neck sweetbread, or pancreas, stomach, belly, or gut sweetbread, typically from calf and lamb, less commonly from beef and pork. That's, what are we talking about? You mean meat bread. Well, I don't even really mean meat bread. It's more just meat. It's just gross meat. That's what the government is suggesting. Hey, we'll let the soldiers eat the T-bones. People at home, you know that meat that you normally throw away? Well, we're going to need you to live on that. Uh, you know, that throat, gullet, neck, stomach, belly. Uh, so if you just can eat the, the garbage meat so we can give the good meat to the soldiers, gee, thanks. That would be great. That's the government's plan. Sounds like a typical government plan, though, doesn't it? Various other glands, which is always a great phrase, other glands. Various other glands used as food may also sometimes be called sweetbreads, including the parotid gland, cheek or ear, the sublingual gland, tongue, throat, as well as ovary and testicles. Oh, my. We have somehow, we are doing testicle kebabs. Hog balls on a stick. How did we get to that from sweet bread? That's where we are. Guess what's for dinner, kids? Sweet bread. Yeah. Good luck with that government. So the, go the government, what is with the, the scientist and the nuclear? Well, I've got to use the free clip art. And that was the best thing I could do for a researcher from free copyright. You're not worried about copyrights. You're using GIFs from Anchorman. You're not going to make any money. Well, whatever. Anyway, that's the best one I could find for a research scientist. Just ignore it. Anyway, the government, you know, they, they're trying to convince housewives or homemakers to serve the sweetbread. So they break into two groups. The researchers are studying two groups, and they're studying how the government is going to try to influence these housewives into incorporating sweetbreads, which again is organ meat, into their diet. So group one. For group one, the government lectures the housewives about the importance of incorporating sweetbreads, also known as organ meats, into their diet because it will help with the, the war effort. So group one, they basically just tell the women, this is why you need to do this. Group two, they have a different approach and they ask the housewives or the homemakers to self-generate the important reasons for incorporating sweetbreads in the diet to help out with the war effort. So they, they ask the women to, hey, can you come up with some ideas of why it would be helpful or why it's important to cook sweetbreads? And guess what they found out? Group one, the group that was lectured, only 3% used sweetbreads. Only 3% of the housewives that were told why it's important did it. Whereas the group that self-generated their own ideas of why the Hulk balls were important, 
that 37%, they actually said, all right, we're going to eat and put the hog balls in our mouth. So imagine that. If you tell someone to put hog balls in their mouth, only 3% of them are going to put hog balls in their mouth. But if you ask someone, hey, why is it important to put hog balls in your mouth? Well, let me tell you why it's important to put hog balls in our mouth. Because we want to defeat the Nazis. That's why. Apparently only 37. 60, what, 3% were still like, mm, still hog balls, not interested. You know, I don't like Hitler, but I also don't like hog balls. This also comes from How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is principle seven. It's the same idea that Bogosian and Lindsay are talking about. Let the other person feel that the idea is his or hers. If you read Dale Carnegie, his book is filled, filled with anecdote after anecdote after anecdote. And in this one specifically, uh, he talks about a sketch artist who's having a hard time selling his sketches to businesses. And he keeps failing, he keeps failing, he's getting very frustrated until one day he has an idea. He has these half-finished sketches and he takes them in and says, here, look, they're not done yet. Can you give me some ideas on, you know, what suggestions? What do you want to see? What would you like? And he, he drops them off and asks them, hey, give me some ideas and then I'll work on it. So he gives them and comes back. They give him some suggestions, suggestions. He finishes them and guess what? He sells them all. For the first time, he's able to sell to them because he realizes that before, he was trying to tell them what they wanted. When he was giving them finished sketches, he was telling them what they needed. That's not the way to do it. No one likes to be lectured. No one likes to be told what to do. No one likes to be told what to believe. So he allowed them to tell him what they wanted. By giving them the half-finished sketches, they were able to say, here's what I want. And he was able to deliver. And he allowed them to believe that it was their idea, which it kind of was. But again, going back to the 37% of housewives that, go, that decided to incorporate organ meats into their diet, they did so because they self-generated ideas. They were not told why it was important. They came up with their own ideas, their own reasons of why it was important. Lecturing. No one likes to be lectured. Does not work. You need to allow people to think that it's their own idea.